right, so hello and welcome to uh, the first episode of my podcast that I hope to be starting. Um, I'm currently in the Lexi School of Business at Butler University. Uh, also, this podcast has no name as of right now. The working name is the Procrastinated Podcast because that's what I love to do and that's what's happened with this podcast. I procrastinated a lot. Um, but that's what I got right now. I don't really know what else. I've been thinking of working shop, workshop and some other names like the Hoosier Podcast, the Procrastinated Podcast. Uh, and I've tried some other cliche ones, I feel, but nothing's really worked. So I'm sticking with the Procrastinated Podcast for now. Uh, my main goal with this podcast, really, is I feel like it'd be good for my career. I feel like it'd be good for me to do going to the, the media field. To, to showcase my ability to produce a podcast, uh, that I know how to do it, the whole process of it. Also, just because I want to do it, I feel like it, it'll be fun to have my own record of like my thoughts at, in, in a time. My a time being uh, August twenty third of twenty twenty at one twenty eight p.m. Uh, on Butler University campus. We actually just got an email this morning. Saying, uh, because the first first day of classes are tomorrow, the twenty fourth. We got an email saying that the first two weeks of class we're gonna be remote, so working online completely. And I am fucking pissed. Oh my god, it's so annoying. I'm so mad, dude. Oh my, I'm I'm not really that mad, but like it's just so frustrating because I want to be here so bad. I want to be on school. I feel so good being on school. I feel in my element. I feel comfortable. I feel like I'm Matthew Stein. I feel like I'm uh, I'm building my own brand here. I'm I'm really on to something. But these fucking people, these other dogs, these fucking people, they're they're ruining it for all of us. Like um this past weekend, uh the Delt, which is one of the fraternities here on campus, they held a, apparently held a 70 person party which is fantastic. You know, when you're trying to stop the spread of a, of a global pandemic, of coronavirus, the good thing, a good thing to do is have a 70 person party, which I wouldn't be surprised if there are people from that didn't go to Butler at that party. And just the idiocracy, how fucking stupid are you? Oh, we're Dell, we're the example frat. And I also realize I'm talking about Dell and all of this stuff, and this will be a lot of Butler frat slander maybe. Uh, and people aren't going to know what I'm talking about, but also this is going to have no audience at first, so like, okay. <laughs> uh, Dell, they threw a 70-person party, and they're trying to ruin it for all of us, basically, it seems. And they're doing a great job. Uh, it's also not just them. There are other people that have gotten, there have been positive cases with Alpha Phi, which is a sorority. Some of the upperclassmen in that sorority have had some cases. Also, one of my close friends, uh, her roommate, uh, came in touch with somebody that's, that has tested positive. So it really feels like it's closing in. Uh, it's really a shit show, I guess is the best example. And it, it, it doesn't appear that it's going to get any better either. It seems like we're just stuck. I'm just stuck here for two weeks. And then they're probably going to send us home in two weeks, I think. The, the deadline, so September 23rd at midnight, at the end of the day, uh, is the deadline for when we can get like a full refund on tuition or something like that. Uh, this is right for my friends. I don't really have any clarity or clarification, but that's when we get a full re or they stop the full refund. So a lot of people have a theory that we're going to be here till September 24th and then they're going to send us home because then they get, get the money, which wouldn't be surprising because I mean, Butler especially, but that's what colleges are about is just making as much money out of us as they possibly can. And they can just keep charging us more and more money and making more and 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 more, and more money off of us. And we'll keep doing it because we're idiots, I guess. I don't fucking. It's so frustrating, dude. It's so frustrating. This whole year has been just an absolute shit show. It's been incredible. Like the the amount of things that have happened and gone wrong, is just astronomical. Is the only word that I can think of. So we started off the year with the uh, uh, Australia fires, where they like the, it seemed like the whole entire country was on fire. Everything was burning to the ground, and then shortly thereafter. Kobe Bryant died. Speaking of which, today it's August 23rd. It's his birthday. Uh, turned 42 today, so happy birthday, Kobe. 
he died, uh, I think, late January, I believe. And then the month of February was kind of okay, if I call, recall correctly. Actually, let's, let, let me Google this. What has happened in 2020? I really wanted to have my computer that's in front of me. I wanted to have that up on this TV behind me, but uh, normally you can airplay onto it, but I don't know. It's, obviously, you can tell there's nothing on the screen, so I don't really know how to do it. Uh, but here we go. We're, we're seeing, oh, yeah, shit, Donald Trump was impeached. Well, not impeached. There was a vote on his impeachment, but it didn't pass because America. <laughs> because America, I guess, that's the theme of the year. I mean, well, I guess there are problems all across the world, but the Australian wildfires. Nearly 500 million animals feared dead in Australian fires. 500 million. That's more animals than live than people that live in America. Oh my God. I wouldn't be surprised if some species went extinct because of this, because of those fires. Tensions with Iran, I don't really know what that is, to be honest. I should be I should be more in touch with that, probably. Kobe. NBA legend Kobe Bryant was killed in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California, along with his 13-year-old daughter Gianna and seven others on January 26th. That, that event, that sole event, I feel was a major turning point or really just set the tone for the months to come to where we're at now. Because it just blindsided everybody. Literally everybody. And Kobe's such a, a worldwide um, icon, I guess. Everybody knows who Kobe Bryant is. And he, his passing was just so out of nowhere. Just hurt everybody. And he... Like he, he won an Oscar a couple of years, like a year ago or something. He, he was so present and prevalent up till the day he died that it really just caught everybody off guard. And I was surprised by how much it affected me, to be honest. Because like I've, I've been a Kobe fan just because he's like a, a basketball legend and he has the mo like moves that you copy. He has the fadeaway, even though it's kind of Michael Jordan's thing. He has the, the, the fadeaway. He has every, I mean, every little kid has seen, or every person, not every person, every teenage boy at least has, when they shoot something in the trash can or shoot something into any bin, you say Kobe, 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 every single time, just because Kobe's the one known for making ridiculous shots. I don't really know where that came from, but man, Kobe died. What else happened? Kobe died. His, and his little daughter, too, Gianna, Gigi, along with those seven other people, which they've kind of just been washed under, or kind of been washed under the rug, which is a little tragic. They haven't been forgotten by their families and their loved ones, but I'm unsurprisingly, Kobe and Gianna were the two most famous. Oh. Iowa caucus chaos. Oh, yeah, the whole election. Fuck me, dude. Oh, the politics has been an absolute shit show. So I'm from Wabash, Indiana. Uh, it's a small town in Indiana, very conservative, as is most of Indiana, to be fair. Uh, but now I'm in Indianapolis, where I go to school, and I'm in. There's a there's a very stark difference between these two places. So when I got to when I first got down here to Indy, there I drove down Meridian Street, which is a, which is a, 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 a popular street here in Indianapolis. So there's lots of big houses along either side, a lot of money. Uh, and nearly every house has a Black Lives Matter or like a Joe Biden sign or Black Lives Matter is not as political as a Joe Biden sign, but some sort of sign that seemed to share some progressive opinion. And then I went home. Sorry, excuse me. I went home last weekend to Wabash. And as I pulled off the highway to go into the town, the first house I saw, the actual first house I saw, had a tra 2020 sign and that it's, it's just like it's disappointing because this this summer i'm kind of bouncing all over the place but that's what this is going to be because it's just my flow of thought uh the summer i worked at a bar that I, that actually my family owns which i hate saying that because i think it sounds bougie like i'm a lawyer's kid and we own a bar that sounds so, like on paper that sounds so glamorous and like i made it i have life given to me which to be fair I did 
did. I do have things that were just kind of handed to me. I, I lucked out. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, back to what I was saying. I worked at a bar this summer, and a lot of those people there, they're very much Trump supporters. They live in the conservative America. They live in their own bubble of sorts. Uh, they, they don't really go anywhere. They don't really meet any new people. They don't really meet any new opinions, have any new conversations. They always talk about the same thing, always make the same jokes. Always do the same shit over and over and over again, and I, I love those people. They're they're great, but like, it's just so tiring. I don't get how they do the same thing over and over and over again. Maybe it's just because I'm young and I think, ooh, everything's got to be changing, got to be moving, got to be doing this, got to be doing that. But fuck, man, the 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 way people, those people live and the ideals they have. And the way they behave is just very toxic. They they talk to each other and they rebound their own ideas off each other because they think similarly. So they never get any new opinions that can help them exp expand their thoughts and learn new things. They're all just stuck in their ways. They think what they know is right because it's all they've ever known. Like there's this one guy, uh, very close friends with me and my me and my brother and my dad, uh, who work at the bar. Um, He's lived in this area his whole entire life. He's been there since he was born, literally, and never gone anywhere, worked the same job for like 40 years. Just does the same thing over and over again every day. Every day gets fucked up when he comes home from work, goes on his boat, sits in the sun, basks in the sun, he's got leather skin. And he kind of embodies the whole idea of that place. Never change. Stuck in your ways, make some poor decisions like dating and dealing with uh, major druggies that control, not control your life, but dictate your emotions in a way. And it's just painful to watch as a, as a young person who likes to think I'm progressive and forward thinking and want to move forward in life. It's just tough to see and it's really scary to be there, honestly. Whenever I'm like when I'm working there, when I work there, it's I'm just holding on to get out is really what I'm doing. I just I'm tr I'm waiting it out. I'm seeing. I just want to get out of there so fast because it's. I'll, I'll, I'll like say I go back. Say we saw, because. Well, I guess I can talk about this. We're actually in the process of selling the place, and when I've told people that, a lot of them have mentioned like they they feel bad because they think that's a bad thing, like you don't want to sell a business, but it's kind of a shit show. Uh, the, the bar is the sole cause of, well, I don't want to say sole cause, but probably the sole cause of all of the stress in my brother and dad's life. So if we're able to get this hunk of property, chunk of property off of, off of our chest, that would be so relieving. My brother could go back to school, my dad could, Focus on his retirement, I guess. He could just take a deep breath, cool down, have some money, feel comfortable. Which I don't think, I don't know if he will feel comfortable because it's just the way he is sometimes. Uh, but it'll be a great thing. At least it'll be a sigh of relief for sure. And I hope the fuck it goes through. Oh, all the lights just turned off. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the guy that's buying the place, he, or is in the process of buying the place. His, he agreed to a price that my dad was just throwing out there. And he agreed to it straight up. And like a week had passed and they were supposed to agree on it and agree on the price and get it done in like a week or so. And then a couple of days before they were supposed to agree on it, this guy sent my dad a text saying that his girlfriend got in a tragic, uh, in a bad accident in California which really kind of unsurprisingly threw a wrench in the system. But, I mean, what are you going to do? It shit happens. It happens. But I really hope that that goes through. It really, oh, man. 2020 has been a year. And I, I, part of me wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't go through because, like I said, 2020 has been a year. It seems that anything can go wrong. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Donald Trump didn't get impeached. Kelly Bryant died. Harvey Weinstein's convicted. Also, he got coronavirus and survived. This dude is older than time 
and looks like just absolute shit. See, this is why I wish we had. I wish I had this up here because I'm looking at the picture of him right now on my computer, and you could see it up there, and I could just keep talking about it. But he looks just like an absolute dirt ball. Uh, he diddled a lot of ladies. I don't know if diddle is the proper word, but <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, not that the diddling ladies is not funny. That's not funny, but the word is funny. He did a lot of inappropriate things with ladies. Wow, actually, okay. On the same day of Kobe Bryant's funeral in Los Angeles, Harvey Weinstein was convicted of rape and assault. And he's in jail now. I think he's in jail for the rest of his life, which the rest of his life is probably like five years because this dude is old as fuck and has probably done a shit ton of drugs. You know what's crazy? I'm not surprised. I wouldn't have been surprised if this guy... Uh, Sorry, I just got distracted. I'm going to be surprised if this guy gets out of jail somehow. But also, I don't think he will because of how momentous this case was. But he kind of started the, the hashtag Me Too movement. Why am I talking about Harvey Weinstein? Who gives a fuck about Harvey Weinstein? This podcast thing is, 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 is diff more difficult than I thought. I, a couple nights ago, or I mean, a few, there have been a few times this summer I've been just laying in bed. And I'll just record a voice memo. A voice memo and see just what I talk about. And it seems that most of the things I talk about are I talk about girls. <laughs> Cause I mean, that is the thing that's on my mind most of, the, not most of the time, but a significant amount of the time. Especially now that I'm back at school, uh, it's something I think about a lot just because it's more prevalent. It's more in front of me. Uh, there are girls, the girls that I have had relationships with or whatever, or run-ins with. Uh, they're around me now, so like, there's temptation. Whereas at the bar, there's the I, I don't really want to dip myself, dip my toes in that pool because it's kind of a cesspool. I don't really, uh, I don't like the jeans that are there. We'll say that. I don't, I don't, I, I think I'm cut from a slightly different cloth than that. And maybe that's my, I'm on my high horse and I think I'm great or whatever, but I'm looking at this list of things that have happened in 2020. Again, it goes Kobe's death, the fires, Harvey Weinstein, the Iowa caucus, whatever the fuck that means. Or whatever the fuck happened there. I know what an Iowa caucus is, I think. Um, looks like it's a been miscounting of votes. Sorry, I'm shaking the table with my knees. I'm a little anxious because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But then we get to the big one. COVID-19. COVID-19, baby. Tearing all of my hopes and dreams apart. Piece by piece. It's so... Why am I alive during a global pandemic? Why? <laughs> Not even why am I alive. Why am I... Because I, I get it. It is affecting everybody, but... Like, I'm in college. This must be like... Party, party, woo, woo, go out, get fucked up, no rules, who cares, do whatever you want. That's what it's supposed to be like, but it's not. It's quite the opposite. There's, there are so many rules. I'm just lucky I'm a junior. One of my friends, Asif Khan, he's an Indian kid. We grew up together. We lived in the same neighborhood, went to the same elementary school, went to the same high school, everything. He's a freshman here at Butler. And I feel, I feel for him and his whole class. They... They came, they're coming into this shit, shit show. I keep saying shit show and shit storm. I know that. Uh, they're, but really, they're, they're walking into this totally blind. And they're having to deal with all these restrictions and regulations and all these things. A lot of them aren't following the rules, I guarantee you, which I don't blame them, to be honest. I really don't blame them. I don't blame a lot of the college kids for, for partying, although it is going to ruin the fun for all of us. Like, in a sense, a lot of us are kind of invincible at least to this pandemic. A lot of us, if we get this, if we get the virus, we'll be fine. If I get it, I'm, I'm a healthy kid. Uh, I don't have any pre-existing conditions, but I'll, I'll probably be fine. But it's still, it's tough, man. It's tough. Can't believe I'm living in a pandemic and it's gonna affect the job landscape when I graduate. Oh man, oh no. It's really, it started in February and then everything got shut down in America, March 
I think 16th, something like that. And ever since then, it's just been like up, down, up, down, up, down. Because we had quarantine from March 15th to like May 20th, I think. That's when restaurants started to reopen because that's when I went back to work. But fuck, dude. It's still going on. It's still very prevalent. I keep saying prevalent, too. This is hard. This is a lot harder than I expected. This is bizarre. I really want to do this, though. I, I kind of enjoy just talking. Although I am sitting in a very open classroom. There are people walking around. And I feel kind of weird about that, but... Oh, well. Who gives a fuck? I've, I've, I, I've became with the mindset recently... Or not recently, in the past couple of years, that... I'm going to be me, I'm going to behave the way I want to be, I'm going to do what I want to do. And if people have a problem with that, shit, man, that sucks. That really sucks for them. Like, I, 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 people that I don't, that aren't important to me, their opinions don't matter. Which kind of makes sense, but that seems to be a, lot, a hard thing for people to do. Just to not really care about what any person thinks. Well, not any person, because there are opinions that matter to me, but... The, the the ability to go about my life, live the way I want to, the, the way I want to, do the things I want to do, wear the dress the way I want to, behave the way I want to, uh, it's been really freeing. Um, it's given me so much more confidence too because I'll just go into a room and be Matthew Stein, and I know I'm well intentioned in my heart. I know I I mean well. I know I'm trying my best to make everybody happy and comfortable. But not to the point that I go out of my way to really please people. More so, I just, with the way I behave and the energy other people give off, I try to find a happy medium and, and, and combine the two. Uh, but that's been really good for me. It's been, it's helped me grow up, helped me understand myself a lot more, helped me read other people a lot more too. Read the room, read the, read the energy <laughs> that, that's going on. It's been good. I, I give a lot of credit to school and being here on my own and having to kind of depend on myself. Uh, I've done a lot of introspection and thought about what goes on in my life, what plagues me, what bothers me, how, uh, what things set me off, what things uh, make me happy, what, what I value. And what is, what is important for me to do, like this podcast. I feel like this is an important thing for me to do for, so for multiple reasons. And I kind of explained them a little bit, but like for my professional landscape, it's good to do a podcast just because it's something I may have to produce in my actual job. And it's kind of, I, I like to think of it, I don't know how true this is, but I think it almost is like self-therapy. Just getting out your thoughts that you have of the things that bother you. And the things that are bothering me right now are the fucking, uh, the fact that we're, the fact that we're closed for two weeks, we're, or we're going remote for two weeks, and almost afraid, almost definitely getting shut down after that. It's really tragic. I can't. It's so bad. And I think America is sneaking up on. Oh, fuck, I totally forgot. I think America's sneaking up on like 200,000 deaths now, which is cool. Let's look up the death counter. Coronavirus. There's like this uh, coronavirus database that apparently was set up by some teenager, but he didn't monetize it or anything. I, I look up to people like that because I know I can't do that. I, like I can, I'm capable of a lot of things, I feel, but I can't. I can't code and make a, a database that tracks live numbers from all across the world. Coronavirus deaths, America. Very jealous of people that have those unique abilities. What, what, what? These numbers are weird. Again, I wish I had this on the TV so you could see what I'm talking about, but it's like these numbers every week they peak they drop and peak, 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 drop and peak. Yeah, it's every week. So like, I wonder why that is. Maybe like because of the weekend or maybe hospitals turn in numbers at different times. Uh, 
fuck. 175,000, 176,000 deaths. A uh, thousand more today. Not for that. I wanted to show all. Yeah, 176,000 deaths. 5.68 million cases. Now let's compare that to the Spanish flu. Spanish influenza. I like the word influenza. It's really, it's a good word. <laughs> and I, I don't know how I feel about the fact that it's condensed to flu. I also... Even though it's politically incorrect, I like the I like the term kung flu, just because it, fly, it flies off the tongue. Uh, it's just good. Oh, so this is life water. It's kind of trash. Can't even lie. Can't even lie. It's just not good. It's weird. I wonder what companies do to make waters taste different. Like. This tastes similar to Dasani, and Dasani is, in my opinion, just trash. It tastes like chemicals or plastic or something. I don't know. Uh, but then water, like, my brother is really hype on this Core Water, a brand called Core Water, which is pretty fire, to be honest. But why is it better? I don't understand what they do differently. If, it, if it's bottled in different areas, does that affect it? Where is this bottled? Um, bottling group, Wichita, Kansas, maybe? Who the f I don't want water from Kansas. Who the fuck wants water from Kansas? Give me that, like, give me that Fiji water. Give me that, I don't want the water that's rolling off the glaciers in Iceland. I want some, some dude who's speaking I, uh, Icelandic. Speaking Icelandic, going up into the mountains and taking his, his flask, his, his goat skin flask and filling it up with water that are dripping down the mountains. But, Going down to the black sand beaches in Iceland. That's what I want. I don't want some trash ass water that's filled, that's bottled in fucking Wichita. Who wants anything from Wichita? People in Wichita probably don't even like being in Wichita. They're like, that's what we got. Rather be anywhere else but here, but it's what we got. Fucking Wichita. I've never, I should never even been, well, I think I've been to Kansas. I've never been to Kansas City. And I think I've been into the Kansas part of Kansas City, which is weird to me that Kansas City is uh, split between, I think St. Louis is the same way, it's split, split on a state line. Why is Kansas City, why is Kansas City, Missouri more popular or more popping than Kansas City, Kansas? That's so backwards. They need to fix that. I think that the Missouri part of Kansas City should just be given to Kansas because Kansas should own the city. It's named after the goddamn state. I think it's only fair. So I'm gonna email Missouri and tell them to give him back. Oh, what was I, I? Man, I really like you can. I, I'm, it's gonna be funny to watch this back and just see my mind wander all over the place and bounce from topic to topic. But that's kind of the whole point of this podcast, right? Just talk about it. Just talk and say what you're thinking. Just try and come up with more and more things. Spanish influenza cases. America. In the U.S., about 28% of the population of 105 million became infected and 500,000 to, 500, to 850,000 died. 0. 0.84 to 0.81% of the population. Native American tribes were particularly hard hit. In the Four Corners area, there are more than 3,000 registered deaths among Native Americans. I don't know if that 3,000... Damn, 17 to 50 million estimate across the world, but I, there's only like 500,000 deaths right now. It's a strain of H1N1, 500 million cases across the world estimate. Lasted two years. Fuck. I'm afraid, some people have said that this is gonna become the new norm that we're going to always be wearing masks, which I probably should be wearing my mask right now, but I had to, I wanted to film this and I don't want to wear a mask and be muffled the first time. Don't want to sound like this the whole time. It's just not the same. It's not fun. Also, I'm in this room totally by myself and I, and I think I'm one of the only people that's actually in this building. So, uh, Danko can suck my dick. Danko is the president of Butler, by the way, for those who don't know. Oh, also, all of you, whoever are listening to this. It's weird talking to this camera like I have an audience. Like, like they're going to be a lot, like, like I, this is Theo Vaughn's podcast or whatever, and they're going to be 100,000 people listening to this. It's weird acting like I have an audience because 
first off, I had to figure out how to post those places, which I know I can just post it to YouTube, but like the SoundCloud and those places, I have to figure that out. Uh, but the only people that are gonna listen to it would be like my mom, my dad, maybe my brother, maybe my sister, maybe some of my friends from Butler. So it's gonna have what four views probably. Oh, that's gonna be tough. I, I really hope I can do this long term. I, I want to do this for maybe ever <laughs> until I die. I'm just I'll be on episode four forty five thousand when I die. Okay, Joe Rogan. Jogan, Joe Rogan, who's been doing his podcast for like seven years or something, super long. I mean, that's kind of the goal. He's kind of started a, a culture shift of sorts of everybody doing podcasts. And I really hope this that I, I can uh, keep this up and persevere and actually do this, prove to myself that I can do something long term and stick with it. Um, but we'll see. I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen, obviously, but. I think I know I can do this. This is really bothering me. You see this like thin part of the chain? Chain. <laughs> the thin part of this like necklace, I guess. It's because there's one one ring that's not like chained together like all of these are and it might break. I need to fix it. Take the time to try and fix it. But what was I saying? Oh, podcast. I really hope I can do this for a long time. Cuz I'm having a good time. It, it is pretty fun. I'm doing this for 31 minutes, and it's not been that hard. Uh, although I'm at the halfway mark. I gotta go another 30 minutes, which seems daunting, but I've gotten this far. I can't be honest. Fuck. I haven't eaten today. It's 1.58. I did wake up like two hours ago, but I haven't eaten today. I probably should eat something. Can I watch Chipotle? Where's my phone? Oh, my phone's in front of me. I think I might go get Chipotle later. I have my car, which is a big clutch. That makes me happy. <laughs> it gives me freedom. I can I can get out of campus and get some fresh air, even though I can get fresh on campus. Fuck! <gasps> Why well, I keep yawning? I'm sorry I keep yawning. Again, saying I'm sorry like other people, like a bunch of people listening, is funny to me. Just because, like, some of, my, some of my friends from high school or whatever have started YouTube videos before, and they, they're they like, Welcome, guys. Welcome to my new channel. Welcome to my video. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Do all these things. Which I guess is probably what you're supposed to say, but they're, they're acting like they're PewDiePie or uh, Jerome ASF or these, these are a bunch of big YouTubers that are popping on the internet. That already have well established fan bases. And they can talk to the camera like they're talking to a group of people because they know they have a group of people that group of people that are gonna turn in and listen to them, tune in and listen to them, but I don't uh, like I said, I only really named my family members. Uh, I would be surprised if they listened to this whole thing, but uh, if you do, whoever listens to this, if you do happen to listen to it 33 minutes and 26 seconds into it, Thank you. I appreciate you very much, especially you, whoever's listening, especially you. You more so than the others. <laughs> oh god. Oh, back to the back to what's happened in the year 2020. Let's go let's go back to that. Okay, so we we kind of covered the pandemic. Now on to another just earth-shattering tragedy, really. The death of George Floyd. Uh, he, uh, police officer, knelt on his neck for eight minutes and twenty-five seconds, I believe is what it was, or forty-six seconds. I can't quite remember. I should know maybe, but I mean, I know what happened. I understand the movement, so I guess that's more important than knowing how long he was knelt on. Um. Crazy. Derek Chauvin, the fucking pussy ass bitch, Derek Chauvin. All right, so uh, we just got a wrench, uh, a wrench thrown in the system. That's really fucking annoying. Uh, I wonder, I'm gonna have to edit these videos together now. Uh, that's tragic, but where was I at? My best friend Jenna just FaceTimed me, uh, so my video stopped, which is upsetting, but we're back. 
Uh, <laughs> we're back. Uh, Jenna, she's a great lady. Very nice lady. I'm a big fan of Jenna. She's a little ramp. Oh, I gotta turn this down. The angle is different. Fuck, Jenna. You fucked it. Hopefully that's good enough. Um, but I'm back. Uh, what was I talking about? George Floyd, Derek Chauvin, um, Jenna Hadley. She's, oh, I shouldn't say her, put her full, full legal out there, but also who's going to listen to this? Who really cares? Uh, Jenna Hadley. She's a nice lady. We met freshman year. Um, she was kind of on an accident. I was filling my water bottle and her and her roommate Sophia were talking about something. Something wild. Uh, about like something about somebody was getting hunted with a chainsaw. I don't really remember what it exactly was about. I went in there and I met them and they became two of my best friends. I would say Jenna's definitely my best friend. Um, yeah, I don't know. They, they were some of my first friends, if not my first friends, that I made here in college. Uh, go, I check there. I keep fucking yawning, goddamn. George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd. Um, that happened. Where is it? That's not all that has happened. What the heck? What, what else is there to talk about? Um, today's Kobe's birthday. Oh, I did mention that earlier. Today's Kobe's birthday. Uh, what has happened in 2020 chronologically? Eighteen things you won't remember happened in twenty twenty. Bong Jung Ho. See, fuck. I wish I had this on the screen because I just said Bong Jung Ho, uh, and I know nobody knows or people listening to this. Again, I'm talking like I have an audience. I know people listening to this don't really know who that is. Uh, I only kind of. He's the guy that directed Parasite, the one that the movie that won Best Picture, I think. Um. Yeah. Bong Joon Ho. Bong Joon Ho. Parasite. I haven't watched it yet. It's on Hulu. It's a Korean. Korean. Korean made film. I hope that's right. We're going to say it's right. It's a Korean made film, um, and it won Best Picture. And I started watching it in the. Part I was watching was really good. Um, I didn't really get that far into it, unfortunately, but I should I should finish it. I should watch it. It won Best Picture for a reason, I guess. Oh, this also mentioned Harvey Weinstein. Michael Bloomberg ran for president. Um, just he basically did the Donald Trump said, "I'm really fucking rich. I'm gonna pay for this presidency." So that's cool. He did that. Uh, didn't work out for him. <laughs> did not pan out as he hoped. He is no longer running for president, and I haven't heard anything about him since, like, the beginning of the year. Megxit was announced. What the fuck is Megxit? Oh, yeah. Harry and, uh, Harry, uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, they left the royal family. That's crazy. Uh, I don't really know anything about that, to be totally honest with you, but I know, uh, Harry is a, a strapping young lad, a redhead, and Meghan Markle is a beautiful young lady. Um, crazy that they left the, the royal family because the royal family is like I get it though they, but they because the royal family has so much attention on them but also by leaving the royal family you kind of bring more attention on yourself so it, it kind of I don't really know what their goal was yeah I, I think they live in America now it would be Prince Harry because he was the troublesome one for the longest time. He was always breaking the rules, acting out, doing crazy stuff. Uh, and Meghan Markle, the, the dirty American, uh, 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 um, infected him or whatever. Made him a bad boy. Made him leave the, leave the country or leave the royal family. Um, oh, yeah. Also, Brexit actually happened. Um... Britain left the EU, which is kind of crazy. 
2020, man. It's been a fucking year. Watch a video of the guy taking the flag out of the, like, lineup of all of the EU flags. Or, yeah. January 31st. Crazy. Uh, I, the Britain flag's pretty solid. It's a good flag. It's very, it's symmetrical. It's got a good color to it. I don't really know how to put the navy, but it's a good color. Huh. Kobe and Gianna died. Fuck, man. People actually thought World War Three was gonna happen. Our fucking president was impeached and then acquitted. Even though he's definitely broke the law. Definitely uh, obstruction of justice. Uh, okay, I'm I'm too uneducated to really go on about what happened. To be honest, I'm too uneducated. But dude's up to some weird stuff. That's all I know. Weird stuff. Weird bad stuff. Um, Cats came out the, the live action version of Cats I remember when I was little When I was little we went to There's a pretty popular Event center I guess I keep yawning uh, There's a really popular event center In my town called the Honeywell Center And like, we used to go there Every now and then for stuff And I remember when we went I was actually going to play there A Christmas Carol I had one line I was Scrooge's great nephew. My one line was, I hope that his dinner gets cold. I've been a savage since day one. What can I say? Um, what was I saying? Oh, I went and saw cats. I remember, it was really weird. I remember them running around like off the stage and they kind of weirded me out. But I haven't even seen the live action movie. But based on the play that I saw, I think the live action movie is a poor decision. Uh, let's take some of these screenshots. Cats. Idris Elba's in it, I know that. I don't really know who else. Taylor Swift. Or maybe... Oh, that would be embarrassing if I lied. Okay, good. I thought I... Oh, saw Jason Drulo and I thought I was just racist for a second. Wow. Taylor Swift, Jennifer Hudson, James Gordon, Jason Drulo, Judy Dench, Rebel Wilson, Idris Elba, Ian McKellen. Um, um, and then I think that's the only the famous... Yeah, that's pretty much the only famous people. But damn, that's a good cast. Did Judy Dench die? No, she's still kicking. I thought she died. I don't know why I thought she died, but... No, she's still kicking. Good for her. <laughs> good for her. She, uh... Is Ma, I guess. Or Mom. In, uh... All of the James Bond... Or the... What's his name? Daniel Craig. James Bond movies. Does a great job, in my opinion. Great job. Um, yeah. What, what was what was I what was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, cats. Sonic the Hedgehog. That was a well anticipated terrible movie apparently because Sonic didn't look like he looked in the video games. It bothers me. Let's see what let's end up seeing how that movie did. Sonic the Hedgehog. Box office. 300 million. There's no, they spent way more money than that on, on making it, I bet, right? Box office mojo, here we go. The budget, wow. All right, so it did pretty good, actually. The budget was $85 million, and they, it grossed uh, 306 million worldwide. So I would say it's actually pretty good. I, it, leading up to it, people were really upset about it because it didn't look anything like the video game, or Sonic didn't. But damn, it actually ended up doing pretty well. I think maybe it, it kind of was like, I don't know. Again, I'm talking to Kim like I have an audience. I was going to say, I don't know if you guys remember Emoji Music, but whatever. <laughs> um, I wonder if a lot of these people went and saw this movie because of all the hype that it was going to be so terrible. I bet that definitely helped. Just like Emoji Movie. Let's look at Emoji Movie. Movie box office. 
217 million. Damn. Also did pretty well. The emoji movie. Budget 50 million. Gross 217 million. That's pretty good. Again, I thought both of these movies were flops. Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I actually went and saw this movie. And I remember uh, it's the only movie I ever fallen asleep during. <laughs> and I saw it in theaters. I went and saw it with my friend Gage. And I actually fell asleep during the movie and slept through the whole thing. <laughs> Which is so funny to me. It was such a hyped up movie because it was going to be so terrible. Oh, sorry. Because it was going to be so terrible. And it did $610 on its last day. Bong Joon Ho. This summer, let's kind of talk about what's motivated me to make this podcast, I guess. Well, we'll another turn in the uh, plot of this podcast, I guess. Um, ouch. Uh. This summer, uh, because of my brother, to be honest, give it, don't want to give him all the credit, but because of my brother, oh, I listened to a lot of podcasts and um, comedy podcasts this summer, and I realized it's just them talking and shitting, and shitting, shitting around, shitting on each other, goofing around, um, and because that, it's really motiv- motivated me to actually do it because I think I can do it. Uh, I think I can I can be good at it in due time. I feel like I can I have the skills to be entertaining, but also maybe not. Maybe I'm on my maybe I'm on my own ass and I think I'm cool or whatever. But I like to think I'm an entertaining person. And because of my brother and watching all these podcasts, watching like Bad Friends with Bobby Lee and uh, Andrew Santino, that's the main one. Um, Bad Friends, uh, King and the Sting. I've been watching that a little bit more recently. Fighter and the Kid, just like bits from Fighter and the Kid. Um, that's kind of it to be honest Bad Friends is the main one I watched that a lot um, but because of those God, yeah. sorry it's made me want to actually do it and do this and, and try it and um, now I'm doing it first episode here we go the procrastinating podcast I think that's what I'm going to stick with for now I think it's the name I'm going to roll with um don't know if it's a good name, but it's what I'm going to roll with for now. Um, I'm weirdly annoyed now. My friend Jenna, when she FaceTimed me, she told me she was going to ha- uh, have dinner with one of her friends, one of our mutual friends, this girl who I actually have a big crush on. Um, and they're going to go to dinner. Uh, and I've been trying to make plans with this girl for a long, not for a long time, but since I've been at school because I would love to see her and I would love to... Uh, <laughs> fall in love with her, I guess. Um, she's just cool, has a very independent. Uh, but I'm kind of annoyed because they're going to dinner, but I don't know why I'm annoyed. I have never made any concrete plans. I do the thing that I normally do. I throw plans out there and then I just let them hang. I said, oh, we should do this, but I never make it happen. I'm like, uh, I never set a time or whatever. Um... I don't know. I'm getting weirdly insecure in my own head now. Sucks that it happens. I'm pretty confident normally, but it only takes like a little thing just to get off my game. It's really tragic. It's affected me. <laughs> it's it's uh, had me bottle some opportunities before, and it's really very very sad. It makes me want to cry. I hope that sounded like it was actually crying because it was a, partially a yawn. But it's okay. It does bother me, but like it's kind of my fault. I should just make plans and actually do them and make them happen and go through with them, but I don't because I'm fucking lazy. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gotta keep the gotta keep talking, right? No dead space. That's kind of the, the name of the game, I, I think. Let's go back to eight um, eighteen things you don't remember happened in twenty twenty. J Lo and Shakira did the Super Bowl halftime show. 
That's a good point. I totally forgot that happened. Um, what? We debated the status. This is on the article by Mashable. We debated the status of government, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's nipples. People think he has his nipples pierced. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know that happened either. Um, 420. Nobody remember 420. It wasn't because we were too high in April. It's because we're in the fucking middle of a pandemic. 420 happened. The whole month of 420. The the four. It was 420 for a whole month. And we and we didn't even celebrate. That's really sad. Um, what else happened? Quibi released in April. Quibi, what, I, I honestly don't even know what Quibi is. It's like a, I think it's like a short video website. They're trying to take advantage of what YouTube's doing. How YouTube, well, they're trying to merge. I, I feel like for a social media website to really explode now, um, they kind of need to merge YouTube and Instagram, which I'm, Oh, I guess TikTok is kind of what that is. So, never mind. But uh, I'm going to keep fleshing out this idea anyways. Merge YouTube and Instagram. YouTube has long-form video. And Instagram has short-form video along with pictures, which people love. It's so quick and easy. Uh, and TikTok has done a good job of that by doing... Uh, I think their videos really vary in length. But I don't, they don't really have many long-form videos, like a minute plus. But if you merge the two uh, and somehow make it fluid, and YouTube's actually doing it on their on their on YouTube, they have these like sections where they'll have uh, like forty second videos or like ten to fifty second videos somewhere in between, just like a, a slider of them, and that's actually been pretty a pretty good feature. I've been using it a lot. Or not a lot, but every now and then there'll be a video that I see that is entertaining and it's only like 30 seconds long. So I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever, fuck it, I'll watch it. So I think they're starting to figure it out, but if you really, whoever's listening here and knows how to develop apps, uh, somehow merge Instagram and YouTube and you'll be sitting pretty. Also, I've been looking at my screen the whole time and I'm pretty positive it looks like I've been looking just off to the side of the camera because right now I'm looking at the camera. So that's gonna be really annoying to watch myself look in the camera the whole entire time, look just right off the side. Even though it looks like I'm looking myself in the eye, but I'm not. I'm looking at myself in the reflection of the camera. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, what else happened? What? Oh yeah, Elon Musk, his his kid, X A E A twelve Musk. So cute! What a good name, X A E A twelve Musk. What a cute, cute name. <laughs> good job, Elon. So proud of you. Beautiful name of a kid. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, also the last dance happened. The the one the um. Probably the most popular docu-series in history, maybe. That may be a stretch, but maybe. Um, uh, the Last Dance on that follows the, the last year that Michael Jordan was in the NBA. That was huge. I remember watching that with my brother and uh, dad during quarantine, and that was fantastic. I loved that. It was it, I really shed light on Michael Jordan in a way that I didn't know existed. Like, to me... Before watching that, Michael Jordan, to me, was like an enigma. He didn't even seem real. Like, I wasn't sure, I'm not sure, I wasn't aware of, like, the things that he achieved, the things that he did, the way he behaved, the magnetism he had, the, the, the presence he had in, in the world. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, I just knew him as kind of an old chubby man. Uh, and, and I didn't know him as the, the sports superstar that he is. But that, that got released, released and that was really good. I wouldn't be surprised if it sparks a lot more of uh, that type of thing, sports documentary that people do on their own. And a big one, 
the Pentagon released UF videos, UFO videos, and no one cared. That's crazy. This is something that really did just get washed on the rug. And that's probably why they released it during the pandemic. Uh, they released videos of unidentified flying objects that, and they admitted they don't know what they are. So real UFOs, like essentially in a way, kind of connect, connecting two dots here, but in a way um, admitting that aliens are real, which is groundbreaking. Aliens are real? My stomach just growled. Okay, I'm 20 minutes into the second recording, and I filmed the other for 30 minutes. 33 minutes, I think is what I was at. So I'm like 54 minutes. I just went to 21 minutes. I'm at 54 minutes now. I'm trying to go for an hour. I think it was pretty good. I've been talking for 54 minutes. I talked to Jenna for a couple. That's pretty solid. And I've yawned about 45 times, so that's pretty good too. So I think I'm entertaining, but... I feel like I've just been rambling this whole time, and I feel like how I've been talking may be somewhat monotone, but fuck it. I'm already, I'm already, I've already done it pretty much. Um, oh, okay. So I've just talked about the things that have happened in the world, but I haven't really talked about what's happened in my world. I can't finish on this, but my, my best friend from high school died this summer, which is cr still hard for me to believe. I think I've thoroughly processed it and I'm able to joke about it. Or maybe that's my coping mechanism. Who knows? Uh, definitely my coping me mechanism. But um, that happened. Kobe, Corey Paul Beeks passed away. And he is somebody that I moved in with my senior year. Um... So when I tried to move in with my senior, sorry, I just got a notification on my phone from the school. I tried to move in with him my senior year. That's crazy. And he's passed away at the ripe old age of 20, 20, 20 years old. It's crazy, man. This has been a, a wild year. And it's not even over. It's fucking August 23rd. <laughs> It's August 23rd, we still have like, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just Google it. How many, 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 many days till the end of the year? There are 130 days left in this year. Uh, 365, let's look up this fraction. We're doing this unnecessary math because we still have 35% of this year left, and it's already been, uh, there's already, enough has happened in this year for a decade, and it's been 60% of a year, so nearly 70% of a year. <clears throat> Man, had my golden birthday this year. Actually, referring back to Cody, buried my best friend on my golden birthday. That's so fucking crazy. Really my best friend from high school on my golden birthday. Turned 20 on June 20th in the year 2020. And on the same day, I buried my best friend. All right, so fantastic. Just got interrupted again um, right at the end of that. Buried my best friend. <laughs> that was a funny time to end it. Um, but I think I'm going to end the podcast here. Episode one of the Procrastinated Podcast. I think it went pretty well. Who knows? Well, I'll figure it out. Um, oh, there's still there's some guys walking around now. Uh, I think it went pretty well. But yeah, I think kind of covered the year 2020 review. I think for the next episode, I'll have to do much more planning and actually plan out my thoughts and think about things that I want to talk about and bring up talking points and plan how you properly properly should plan for a podcast, you know, with notes and stuff like that. Um Oh, I can talk about basketball. I talk about sports next time. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> but yeah, that, this is episode one. Um, working title, still the procrastinated podcast. I think that's what I'm going to roll with for now. And it may stick. Who knows? Um, any closing thoughts from me? Uh, 
wear a mask, even though I'm not wearing one. Wear, wear a mask. Do your best to follow the rules. Help others. Care for others. Love one another. If you see somebody in need, reach out a hand. Do what you can to help them. Um, that's kind of it. Episode one. Procrastinated podcast. In the books. That was really fucking dumb. <laughs> That was really dumb. Yeah, episode one. Over and done. Methstein, over and out.